So we have a lot of forest intact. And we get a chance flying from Georgetown to the interior, you'll see that. And across that, as I call it, the sea of broccoli that covers Guyana, um, there are many habitats. And birds adapt to certain types. Now, you have some types of birds adapt to some types of habitat, meaning even areas that might be somewhat disturbed, you have certain species that specialize into these fast, faster growing plants and those fruiting plants that, you know, inhabits back the area and those birds go there. You have other birds that would be stay farther into the more pristine, what we call the more pristine forest. And so, so birds generally, are, and uh, summary of that, I would say birds can be used as an indicator in terms of saying, okay, the area is disturbed, not so disturbed, or, you know, more, dis you know, more pristine, let's say. Um, and I think all of you might have seen some of those birds. We have at the bottom there, two tucans, and that little one with the red forehead. I wouldn't say little, actually. It's one of the Amazonian parrots. We normally know, people on the coast, you know, one of the names we call switching parrots, which is the parrots that people would keep as pets. Now, the ways to generally tell the Amazonian parrots apart is from shoulder upwards. So you have things like orange wing, yellow crown. This one is called a festive parrot. You have blue cheek and such. And uniquely, it's just looking, knowing the features on the head, that would tell them apart. Because if you see them in flight, they're all big, all green, and they actually have a yellow patch on the wing. So looking at the heads, I will tell them apart. Um, I'm here. Guyana, the whole, as we mentioned, is quite extensive with many major forest types and extensive habitat types. But what we're looking at is the potential, and not only the potential, the actual abundance, high diversity of bird species along the coast of Guyana. Are we talking about from Shell Beach coming right down, you have to survive right onto the Quarantine River, but there are a few areas along that are becoming more popular for doing birding during the day because of easy access from Georgetown. To go out, starting at the top, um, left Shell Beach, well, that's a more a unique trip that you need to go there. That's not a one day trip to do birding. But they have a quite a diverse habitat um, spectrum there. You have both the beaches, you have the history areas, you have freshwater areas behind, including lakes, and, um, and even some amount of, now the habitats have changed, we really have like what we call the post El Nino fires from years back. So where the mangrove have changed over time because of so I'm going to find that itself produce unique habitats for some of these birds. Coming down, you have Adel's Resort, which is near the Pomeroon River, and the mouth of the Pomeroon River, the mud flats there, are pretty much amazing at the low water tide where you have the bird in the top um, right corner, the scarlet ibis, which is also, I think, the national bird of Trinidad. But there are several areas along the coast that you can actually get to see scarlet ibis. One of the easy places to see scarlet ibis is just going to the Demerara Harbor Bridge at low water time. So that's how easy access you can get um, to these, you know, some of these birds. And then you have other areas like Main, Lake Mainstay, and I would call it the collectively the Escriba Lake. So there's several huge lakes out there, Tapakuma, Mashabo, and such. Very big lakes, and they have a lot of um, what you call wetland species, or waders, or water birds, and such as you um, collectively group them. And then you come to the Esquibo River, where there are, you have both, uh, both birds that move between the islands and the mainland, and then on the, the beach areas of the mudflats where the tides go out, you have birds that come in to maximize those exposed areas as foraging ground within the period that the water is out, and then they will move to higher ground when the water comes in back. But there are several um, areas there that you can go to stay in. Some of the names, well, Borkaba, for instance, Slot Island, Badalara Island, they have actually places of accommodation and they have access to areas and some of the other places would be things that, um, let's see, Shanklands and such, where there are actually trails that you can do both forest birding and also riverine, terrestrial birding. 
Um, then you have generally Georgetown, as I mentioned, botanical gardens and the close environment of Georgetown. Then you come, go along the coast to specific mangrove areas such as Hope Beach and Victoria Beach. And going even further along, you have the waterways of the Mahaika, Maikoni, and the Bari. And they are Bari for sure. So when you cross over the Bari Bridge, instead of going up the Bari Bridge on your right hand side, you turn left and you're heading to between the what you call the Georgetown and um, Rosignol Road and the coastline. And there are many species, they're prime habitats for some of the ones that people look for things like um, Rufus crab hawks and um, Guyana endemic, which one of the Guyana tree endemic, which is the blood colored woodpeckers, and little woodpeckers. Pity that Suriname has that border, else it would have only been here. <laughs> and just quickly to show you some of the show birds. The scarlet ibis, which is the big guy in red. The kokai heron, the bird in flight. And striated heron, which is the closest shot. And also along the coast, um, some of you might know the old name of what they call Negocop, which is the Jabaru star. So it's basically our largest bird. The only one that will rival that in terms of size, we'll see later on as we go down. <laughs> 